I made a free script that brings Figma's auto layout to After Effects. Let me show you how it works. Here I have a whole bunch of icons just scattered across my comp, and this is Gridlock. It's a very simple interface, a single button with layers selected. Just click it, and it's going to generate a parent container, a Gridlock container, and give me a Gridlock effect that has custom controls for the layout of all of those layers. And you can see it's already arranged them all into a nice row. We have controls for the gap, so I could increase the spacing between them. We have padding, which will push it off of the edge of the container. But what's more exciting, I think, is this direction and alignment control. So if we go to the direction, we can change it from horizontal to vertical, and now it's gonna be a column instead of a row. Or we can switch it to wrap, where this is now going to fit to the size of this container. It's just a shape layer, and if you double click on it, it's gonna go into edit mode so that you can grab these controls and resize it. And as you can see, it's dynamically responding to the size of this container. You can do this to whatever size you want and those icons or whatever layers you had selected will automatically contain themselves within that space. Now, if we change the align from start to center, then it's gonna align it horizontally in the center. We could change that to the end and align it to the right, but then we have space between and evenly. And if you've used Figma, you know what this does. But if I change it to space between, and then I resize, you see that that horizontal distribution is now filling the width of the row that it occupies. So there's less space between each item on the first row and an even amount of space between these three items on the second row. We can do the same thing for this cross align. So instead of center, we can change it to space between and it's going to distribute vertically as well. Now, there's also an option to do space evenly, and if I switch this on both of them, it's going to center that content in the middle. So I could make this a little bit smaller, or maybe I want it to be bigger, but not have everything so tightly packed. I could increase that gap size to give everything a little bit more room. I could increase the padding to shrink it down a little bit, and now I have everything aligned in this nice grid. Now, I'm working with just shape layers, but this also works for footage items and text layers. So if I just make a new solid, and we'll make it 100 by 100 and bring this over, I can shift click on the container and then click on the grid lock button and it's going to add it to that grid lock. And the ordering is determined based on the stacking order within the comp. So I can move this around however I want to rearrange the items or reverse the order completely. Another feature that I really like is this influence slider. If I turn this down, it's going to interpolate back to the original position of those layers. So you could animate your icons coming onto frame into a specific space, and then just keyframe this value from zero to 100 to have them all align to this grid. And the size of this container can also be keyframed. So if I go into the contents, into the rectangle, the transform for this rectangle is where you're going to want to keyframe this scale. So if I set a keyframe here, and let's make sure we just bring that to the start of the comp, and then I go forward a little bit and change its size just by double clicking and resizing, then we can actually animate between these two values. Let me just increase the speed graph a little bit for these X and Y values to make it a little smoother and play that back. And you'll see that it's animating and reflowing to fit that container. And in the same way, we could add in keyframes on the influence. So let's just hit influence 100% right there. Press U to bring up the keyframes. Turn this down to zero, and then again, easy ease and speed this up on both influence in and out. And why don't we make this original layout a little bit nicer? So I'm just gonna grab all those, align them to the bottom and distribute them evenly and maybe make that just a little bit wider. So I'll grab all these icons, not the container and distribute them. And now it's going to interpolate from that bottom row to the grid and then reflow as that container resizes. Like I said, this works with more than just shape layers. I just wanted to give you something that visually looked good. But another feature that's really cool is that it is going to pay attention to the size of the layers. So as I scale this up and down, this container is going to reflow all of the other layers within it to match whatever settings you have set on the gridlock effect. This also goes for the rotation of any layers. It's all going to be dynamic and update however you have it set. And let's say that you don't really need this to be responsive. You just wanna use it as an alignment or layout tool. Well, once you have it set the way that you want it, just select all of the layers minus that controller container layer 
and then Alt or Option click on the grid lock button and it will unlink and preserve all of the transformations of those layers and even remove the container. So now we don't have any expressions, we're just using it as a layout tool. That's really, really useful. But I'm gonna undo back to where we still had this in the grid lock layout. And let's say that I wanted to have a grouping that had different spacing than other objects within this grid lock. Say these three icons here. I'm gonna select just those, again, not the container, and then click the button again. And grid lock is gonna identify that those layers were already part of a grid lock layout, and it's gonna put them in a new container. So I'm gonna grab all of those layers, and now they're going to be positioned as a whole. So if I rearrange their orders, you can see how it's updating the layout. And this container has its own effect where we can again set this to whatever we want it to be, resize this container so that it's smaller or larger, give it a custom gap or padding. It's all completely flexible and works just like it does in Figma. If I wanted to duplicate this icon a couple of times so there's more in that nested gridlock layer, I can do that. And if I go to this parent container, I can expand it so there's more room and those icons aren't overlapping. And then maybe center that up in my composition using the standard line tool. But that is Gridlock. Now you can install it as a script UI panel like I have right here. Just put it in the script UI panels folder for the version of After Effects that you're currently using. There are instructions on the product page if you've never installed a script before. You'll just need to restart After Effects and then you can find it in the window menu. But you don't have to take up this much workspace just for this single button. You could also use it with a tool like Code Runner, which is another script that I've created for free. It allows you to assign buttons to scripts expressions or presets and this will just open up the panel and allow you to interact with it whenever you need it but you can also install this with kbar or mobar if you're users of either of those tools i'm trying to design all of my tools so that you can use them in whatever environment is best for you now, I'm only one person, I could only stress test this tool so much, so if you run into any bugs or you have feature requests, please let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do about them. There are links to download both of those scripts in the description. While you're on my website, make sure you browse my other free tools as well as my paid courses if you're interested in becoming a better motion designer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.